Your attention, please. Hence of only which to announce the departure of flight 161 to Flinders Island and Launceston. That is the request of the board here. A flight across Bass Strait to Flinders Island in the Furneaux group takes about 45 minutes. Yet these lovely islands are much as Bass and Flinders found them almost 200 years ago in October 1798. Lacking a sea ferry, islanders and visitors alike commute with Melbourne and Launceston by air. Whitemark is the main seaside township on Flinders, an ideal centre from which to see the islands. And not only from the ground, for the islands also offer an unusual venue for Australia's adventurous aero clubs. Soldier settlement farms are the backbone of the island economy. Cattle and sheep do well on pastures enriched and seeded from the air. South from the farmlands, the highest peaks in the islands, named after the famous explorer and scientist Count Stretzlecki, rise to two and a half thousand feet. The east coast sweeps uninhabited from north to south. These islands are a naturalist paradise. And it was here that the remarkable explorer and naturalist Bass made the first detailed observations on the wombat. Island scenery has attracted the artist from earliest times. In 1875, Canon Brownrigg sailed through the islands in his nine-ton ketch and enhanced his book of the voyage, called The Cruise of the Freak, with many island sketches. A few miles from Whitemark is Lakota Beach. Just the place for a quiet swim. In calm weather, these island waters remain clear to a considerable depth and afford the spear fisherman and scuba diver unrivaled sport. Over 300 wrecks lie off the reefs around the islands. Today, only the Farsund is visible where in 1911 she struck a shoal in Franklin Sound, the channel between Flinders and Cape Barren Islands. Swept by the easterlies, she too must join the other wrecks beneath the waves. Rumour has it that much of her cargo of China lies inaccessible in her hold. An oddment lodged in the reef may reward the diver, but with luck it could be a big crayfish or something just right for the pot. Secluded bays and sheltered beaches indent the south coast round Lady Barron and along Franklin Sound. Commander Stokes of HMS Beagle chose Killicranky Bay as his northern anchorage, 
during his survey of Australian coast and Bass Strait from 1839 to 1843. The bay and mountain are among the few island features shown on Admiralty charts of the time. No earlier references can be traced, and as Stokes offers no explanation, the naming of Killicranky Bay remains a mystery. Peter Scott, son of the polar explorer, and famous for his paintings and films of bird life, sketched the rare Cape Barren Goose during his visit to the islands. The fifth rarest species of goose in the world today, they are seldom seen outside the islands, where they are protected. The bush is rich with bird life, and the Australian black swan shares the lagoons with a profusion of waterfowl. Instinct and breeding habits have made the shearwater called the mutton bird, part of the island economy. After a migratory circuit north to the Bering Straits, the flocks return to nest on the outlying islands. Each year, fledglings are taken during a brief season, as the mutton bird is a Tasmanian delicacy. Lady Barron lies midway along Franklin Sound at the foot of Vinegar Hill. The port is the centre of the island crayfishing industry. The catch is brought in alive and flown to interstate and overseas markets. A variety of fish can be bought from the boats, a more reliable supply than the young enthusiast on the jetty. Boats and beaches have always attracted the artist's brush, and the tucked stern of the Tasmanian hardwood fishing boats, some of them up to a hundred years old, has a beauty of line which catches the eye. A nautilus shell won't add much weight to air luggage, nor will a topaz or two, known locally as Killicranky diamonds. Topaz were first collected about 1875 in the sands of Killicranky Bay by Peter Gardner, who sent a selection of white, pink and yellow topaz with quartz crystals and beryls to the Crystal Palace exhibition in London. Because some stones were hard enough to mark glass, they were called diamonds, and still are. The small ships come and go with the island trade. A Tasmanian trading catch with a cargo of wool waits for the tide at Whitemark. Under par, the run home takes her two days. By air, the return flight is less than an hour, and the visitor carries away vivid memories of Flinders and the Furno Island.